Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. My name is Vijay Nagarajan from University of Edinburgh. So, um, this talk is going to be about uh, our tool called Protogen, which takes as input an atomic coherence protocol specification with only the stable states and transition and produces a highly concurrent implementation, non stalling implementation with all of the transient states. So, this is joint work with uh, Nikolai Oswald, who is a PhD student at Edinburgh, and uh, Daniel Sorin, who is a, a professor at Duke University. Okay, very brief review about cache coherence. As you know, uh, whenever there in a, in a, in a shared memory multiprocessor with local caches, there is always a risk of cached values becoming stale. Here we see uh, two blocks here uh, to the block address x with an initial value 0, and the moment one of the processors writes to it, the other value becomes stale. Right? A cache coherence protocol prevents this situation by doing what on a write, updating or invalidating other shared copies. So, on a write, typically what happens today in directory based protocols is that a message is sent to the directory, uh, the directory then uh, uh, invalidates this copy and therefore, uh, so that when this processor reads this, it does not see the stale value. Yeah? That is how cache coherence operates. Cache coherence protocols are notorious in the sense that they are really known to be really hard to uh, implement and verify. And if you do not believe us, look at all of these papers in academia saying same, same, right. And it is not only in the academia, there are some real bugs and real process with dedicated validation and design teams. So, why are cache coherence protocols hard? If you look at this simple textbook protocol, right, so this is a, a classical MSI protocol. There are a bunch of handful of stable states, handful of transitions. So, what is so hard about it? For example, you are in shared state as we saw and you performed a write, you send a message to a directory, invalidate other shared copies. So, what is so hard about this? The problem is that this simple textbook protocol assumes that each of these state transitions or what we call a coherence transaction happens atomically. Right? That is only true uh, in the case of uh, an interconnect such as an atomic bus. As you know, today's multiprocessors do not use such simple interconnects and they choose to go for scalable interconnects and distributed directories. Given that what we have is a world in which we do not have physical atomicity, so we need to provide the illusion of atomicity and that is where we get all of these so called transient states. These are just the transient states for going from the state i to m, right. So, there are so many and no wonder cache coherence protocols are complex. So, let us just understand that a bit better. Suppose you want to go from shard state to modified state. So, what you need to do is send a, send a uh, request to the directory, the directory sends invalidates and then this writer gets acknowledgements. Clearly, it is not an atomic step. There are multiple steps involved and therefore, you need to add what is known as a transient state. But that is not all. You want to provide concurrency. You want to make sure that multiple coherence transactions to the same block happen at the same time. You do not want to restrict concurrency and therefore, you, what you need to deal with is concurrent racing requests to the same cache line coming from other process. So, you need to be able to deal with them in the transient state also. Therefore, in the world in which there are non-atomic transactions and given that you want to support concurrency racing transactions, you get all of this complexity. Right. So, just to summarize, stable state protocols or atomic protocols assume a physically atomic bus, physically atomic coherence transactions, but that is not the reality and we want high performance and concurrency and therefore, we have the complexity of transient states and actions. Let us abstract this a bit further and as an analogy, stable state protocol or an atomic protocol is like a sequential specification. The final high performance concurrent protocol is like a non blocking concurrent implementation and transient states are really like non blocking synchronization operations. Therefore, really this task of converting an atomic stable state protocol into a highly concurrent protocol is equivalent to the task of converting a sequential object into a non blocking concurrent object. And as you know, 
there is a separate community for dealing with all this complexity. This is no easy task. No wonder cash core and protocols are hard. Right? So, okay, given this, how do you even ha hope to automate this process? This seems like a tough task. So, let us look a little bit into this conversion. What entails converting a sequential object into a non-blocking concurrent object? So, without loss of generality, let us assume that there are two method calls, yeah, method 1 and method 2. And this is the serialization order which we want to give an illusion of. So, what do we do? With a non-blocking concurrent object, we want to somehow overlap these two method calls in time while making it seem like method 1 appears before method 2. How is this done in a non-blocking non concurrent object? This is done with the use of what are known as linearization points. These are simple atomic steps, usually using read modify write instructions, which provide the illusion with a single step as if method 1 happens. This is what lies at the heart of writing a non-blocking concurrent object. And this is hard. Identifying linearization points and making sure and orchestrating them correctly is hard. As an analogy, we looked at, look at a cache coherence protocol. You have concurrent coherence transaction. Let us say you want to write to cache line x from these two cores. These are two racing coherence transactions. You want to give an illusion of sequential order. This is task is similar, but that is a caveat and that is helpful to us. The linearization point here is given to us and that is in fact the directory. So, this problem of converting a sequential specification into a non-blocking concurrent implementation in the general case is a really hard problem. There are separate communities to solve this. But if given a linearization point, if it is provided to us, then the problem becomes much more tractable. And this is the insight we use to automate this process. So, with this insight in mind, let us understand how we can understand transient states. So, the question is, how do transient states provide logical atomicity? Recall that this is what transient states and actions need to provide. So, the overarching structure here is that the directory knows the serialization order of coherence transactions. So, if somehow the directory can convey this order to the caches and the caches can honor this order, then we are done basically. So, this is what we exploit and automate. This is what protogen automates, this insight. Okay. So, let us just understand this better with this again the same example. So, recall that we wanted to go from shared state to modified state. We want that is we are performing a write and we are in the middle of a transient state. Right. So, how do we react to incoming events when we are in a transient state? So, recall that you could have events such as an invalidate, a racing transaction. So, the idea here is that by just looking at the message at the state, we infer as to whether the racing coherence transaction was before us or after us. As an example, the very fact that you are receiving an invalidate here means that the directory sees us in shared state. Otherwise, it would not have sent us an invalidate. It would have sent us a forward get us request because we would have been in modified state otherwise. So, just by looking at the invalidate message, we infer that this was in fact for S state and we react accordingly. Likewise, if the message was a forward get us, then it implies that the directory sees us in this state. This in turn implies that this transaction must have serialized in the directory before the racing transaction. And so, we are rea react as if in modified state. So, that is the key insight, inferring the serialization order. But the problem here is that we may not always be able to infer this order depending on how protocols are written. Let me give you an example of a MOSI protocol. A MOSI protocol has an owner state. And what is an owner state? It is very similar to modified state. The only difference is that it is, uh, it's, it's, you cannot write in O state. Okay? So, you still are in charge of providing the data, but you cannot write to it. And therefore, because an O state and M state are similar, the types of messages that can both O state and M state can receive are likely going to be named similarly by the protocol designer. For example, a forward get I'm here. So, how do we disambiguate this situation? So, how do we realize by just looking at the message whether or not our transaction was serialized before or after the racing transaction? That's the question. And the answer is actually blindingly obvious because we have 
what we can do is simply rename the messages accordingly so that we will be able to disambiguate. And that is all there is to it. So, we rename the messages as forward get m o if the directory is in o state or forward get m m if the directory is in m state and so that we can continue to disambiguate what was the serialization order based on the incoming message. So, to summarize the key insight here is that we need to be able to infer the serialization order and we do this by looking at the incoming message. Optionally, we might need to rename messages in order to guarantee this. So, and then we react like in a stable state. Right? With that in mind, our tool has a front end, our own domain specific language for writing uh, stable state protocols or atomic protocols. And then we have the protogen, you can think of it as a compiler, automatically produces uh, uh, a highly concurrent protocol in our own intermediate format. And then we could have different backends for, let us say, uh, slick or Verilog or whatever you want. Currently, we have a backend for Murphy, which is a model checker for coherence protocols, because we wanted to be able to make sure that our protocols are in fact correct, right, using a model checker. Right. So, and this is as far as verification is concerned. So, we have tried MSI, MESI, MOSI, and MOSI protocols, and then we have verified in Murphy for safety and deadlock freedom. So, to test the efficacy of uh, uh, protogen, what we also tried was to give a stable state specification of a protocol called TSOCC. This is a protocol similar in spirit to what we saw in Spandex, yeah? this is like a self invalidating protocol. So, we continue to find that uh, uh, we, we, we are able to generate the highly concurrent protocol and that model checks. What about the performance, how good are the automatically generated protocols. So, what we did for this was take protocol specifications, manual specifications from a book called a primer on cache consistency and coherence, we used the stable state specifications, generated the automatic protocols and compared against the manually generated ones in the book. So, what we found was the stalling protocols uh, were almost identical. For the non-stalling protocols, the primer has only the MSI protocol as non-stalling and we in fact have five fewer stalls than a manually generated protocol. So, uh, so based on evidence, protocol, uh, protogen is as good or better than manually generated protocols. Right. So, one, key, one thing to keep in mind is that protogen is work in progress. So, there are a bunch of limitations we are act actively working on it. So, these we do not view as something fundamental, but mostly like something that needs to be developed. Okay, right. So, with that we come to the end of the talk and basically Protogen is a tool that makes cache coherence protocols tractable. The idea with Protogen is that you given a stable state protocol which is like an atomic specification for a coherence protocol, it automatically produces a highly concurrent non blocking one. Right. And why were we able to do that? The key insight here is that the problem of converting a stable state protocol into a non blocking concurrent protocol is equivalent to a problem of converting a sequential specification to a highly concurrent implementation, but the linearization point is provided, which is why we are able to automate this. So, we have more details in our ISCA paper, Protogen, and we are also have code here which has the DSL, the compiler. Please try it out. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, we have some time for questions. I can yell out unless you want me to pause the live stream. Oh, of course, fair enough. Um, hey, uh, so did you look at uh, Massive or anything similar? Yeah. So we have not yet looked at the forward state, uh, although uh, we do not believe that this is something that we cannot handle. It is just that we have not looked at it. Do we have any more questions? Uh, please state your affiliation, your name, if you don't mind. Jonathan Woodruff, the University of Cambridge. Um, so you mentioned possibly generating Verilog. It seems likely that designers are going to to probably build their own cache hierarchy. Would you consider um, verification so that someone b building their caches would could automatically have some verification tool to make sure they match the protocol that you're expecting they're following? 
Obviously, yeah. So this is this is this is in fact why we actually the first thing that we targeted was a ba back end to Murphy. So we, in principle, any language which has this guarded atomic action, we can target that to that language. And uh, and yeah, I entirely agree with you that targeting a verification language such as Murphy would would be good to make sure that the generated protocols are correct. So maybe I should be more familiar with Murphy, but is Murphy used to verify Verilog designs? Right. So uh, Murphy is typically used to verify any uh, um, any kind of finite state machines, right? So uh, think of it like uh, blue spec. It's similar in spirit to blue spec, but it's for verification. So yeah. So it's perfect for that. We have time for one more question, maybe. Okay. I have a question. So so you mentioned you try to compare. Uh, some reference uh, implementations uh, to what Protogen uh, actually um, generates. Yes. Are you have you looked into optimizing um, the transient states? Are a quite complicated thought exercise for for those who have done it. Have you try to actually optimize and maybe uh, use through your analysis some insights uh, that are hard to by hand. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, in fact, what we found, and we have not reported, I have not reported this in the talk, but it's there in the paper. One of the problems when manually generating these protocols is that there is a reason why the book actually stopped with MSI. Because if you wanted to do something like MoSE, there would be like 70 transients, uh, uh, like 150 uh, uh, kind of uh, state transitions between the transient states. So it just blows up the amount of tra uh, transient states and after a point it becomes hard to optimize away uh, the number of transient states. Although it's possible that you could, some of the transient states are equivalent, right, logically, but it's, it's very intellectually challenging to do that manually and we are able to do that already. So uh, we didn't report here, but so the, for the protocols, even for the published one in the book, we were able to have lesser states yeah. than, uh, than what it would require for the same non-stalling effect. So, so obviously, if you want it to be more non-stalling, you would need to have more transient states. For the same level of stalling or non-stalling, we can have fewer transient states because we would be able to optimize away automatically what transient states are equivalent. Let's thank the speaker once more.